Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at how Lightroom and Photoshop work together. More specifically, we're going to take a single image and then multiple images from Lightroom and actually hand them off to Photoshop so that we can further enhance them. So before we just hand this off to Photoshop, it'd be best if we actually looked at some preferences. So in Lightroom, I'm going to choose the Preferences. If you're on Windows, you'd go into the Edit menu and then select Preferences. And I'll scoot over to the External Editing. Here at the top, you can see when I hand off my image to Photoshop, by default, Lightroom is going to hand it off as a TIFF file in ProPhoto 16 bits and at 240 dpi. But of course, I can change all of that. So let's say instead of handing off a TIFF file, I want to hand off a Photoshop document. I want to keep it in ProPhoto. That's going to be the biggest color space. I'll keep it also in 16 bit, but I'm going to change the resolution to 300. Now this becomes my default setting. So let's go ahead and close this, and then in Lightroom, I can choose Photo, Edit In, and then Edit in Photoshop CC. Or I can use the keyboard shortcut Command E or Control E. Of course, if you have a different version of Photoshop, it will be listed here, and you can choose to edit your image in that version of Photoshop. If Photoshop is not running, Lightroom will automatically tell it to launch, and then it will hand off the image. And we, in fact, can see the image here. Now, one of the things that's rather interesting is because I have not saved the file, we'll notice that it actually has the .dng after it. But I don't want that to confuse you because as soon as we do save it, it will go ahead and save it as a PSD. The reason that it has the .dng is because I have not saved it, and so this file is kind of in limbo, which is actually a good thing because if I decided that I didn't want to do anything with this image and I simply closed it, then Lightroom would just forget about this rendering of the file. So Lightroom wouldn't be making a bunch of images that I wouldn't end up using. Now, let's go ahead and just make a quick change to this image. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command-I on the Mac or Control-I on Windows just to invert the image. I just want to make sure that we can actually tell the difference between the original image and this one that we've taken into Photoshop. Then I'll save the file using Command-S or Control-S to save the file. We can see as soon as I've saved the file, the extension changes, so it's now a PSD file, and there's a dash edit after it, so it's been renamed. Then I'll close this file. We'll go back over to Lightroom, and we can see that not only do I have my original RAW file, the DNG file, but now I also have the PSD file. And they're also stacked. That's what this little 1 of 2 and 2 of 2 is. And in fact, I can close the stack by clicking on this little slider right there, or I can open the stack. If you prefer not to have your images stacked, we can go back here underneath the Preferences, and right down here we can uncheck the option to stack with original. If you want Photoshop to rename the files differently, we can also edit that. Right here where it says Template, I'm going to go down to the bottom where it says Edit, and I'll just show you the one that I'm using. This happens to be the original file name, and then I just add an underscore ME, and that ME stands for Master Edited. So I know that this is no longer my original, but it's actually the edited file. So you can set this up however you want to, and then just save your preset by using the drop down menu here to save the current settings as a preset. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel since I already have that preset, and I'll just select it from the list. Now when I close this, if we go back to the original DNG file, and I decide I want to edit it in Photoshop, and I pulled up this menu just by using the right mouse click, or you can use Control click on Mac, then Lightroom will hand off this file to Photoshop. And this time I'll make a different mark. I'll just use my paintbrush and we'll just paint on top of this one so we know this is the version. And again, once I select Save or Command S or Control S, we can now see that not only has it been renamed to the master edited here, but also when I close the file and I return back to Lightroom, this image is not stacked with the original. Now, what if you sometimes want to take your image into Photoshop as a 16-bit image, but sometimes you want to take it into Photoshop as an 8-bit image? Well, we can set up presets to do that. So again, we'll return back to those preferences in the external editing, and then down here where it says Additional External Editor, 
I'll go ahead and click the Choose option here, and I'm going to select Photoshop CC, which might sound counterintuitive, but I'm actually just trying to set up a preset to open the same file, but with different settings and my latest version of Photoshop. So once I've designated my application here, I'll change this to Photoshop, I'll leave it to sRGB and an 8-bit. Then in order to save it, I'll choose to save the current settings as a new preset. We'll call this PSD 8-bit and then sRGB. As soon as I click Create and close the preferences, now when I right mouse click or control click on Mac, and choose Edit In, you'll notice that I have my preset now available. And of course, I didn't have to select Photoshop as my external editor. I could always choose another application, for example, if I was going to take my file to Painter. In addition, you'll notice that there are some other options right down here, although the only one available right now is the Open as Smart object in Photoshop. But if I select this sequence of images here, and then right mouse click and choose to edit in. Now that I have more than one image selected, I can choose to merge these to HDR Pro in Photoshop. So Lightroom will hand off all three of these images to Photoshop and Photoshop will actually build a single file that's not 8-bit or 16-bit but is a 32-bit image. If instead I wanted to hand off these three images because I wanted Photoshop to build a panorama, again I'll right mouse click, say edit in, and now I can choose to merge these to a panorama. And finally, if I select this image, then hold down the Shift key and select this range, if I wanted Lightroom to hand off all three of these images and open them all up into a single Photoshop document, then I can right mouse click, select Edit In, and actually open these as layers in Photoshop. So again, multiple layers, but in a single document. Well, that's a quick look at how you can take your images from Lightroom to Photoshop and continue working on them there. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.